but there's a different way I'll show you once he's done yeah. to eliminate that. He does the a different, in? yeah, Sean does a uh, different way of doing the hand drill. Oh, my injury, I'm like, dude. And that's called the floating hand drill. And uh, he'll demonstrate that. I do it a little bit differently. Um, and once again, is it wrong? Absolutely not, as long as you have the end result. If you have an ember and you have fire, you're good to go. So the first thing I want to do is uh, I'm going to shape out my fireboard a little bit more. And uh, this is a Mora knife. This is an excellent knife. Mm -hmm. If anybody's familiar with mm -hmm. this, it's real thin. It's about an eighth inch thin. Mm -hmm. It's a high carbon steel. Mm -hmm. And another thing is it's razor sharp. Mm -hmm. This thing is about 20 bucks. So it is a very, very Where's cost that? effective knife. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can find this on Amazon. Amazon. You can find it mm -hmm. uh, uh, pretty much uh, I know eBay has some of them. You can find this mm -hmm. anywhere. It's a very, very nice Goodbye. knife. Let's yeah, he has the light my yeah. fire version. Yeah, so, exactly. Everybody pulls yeah. out their more uh, and knives. That's a guy thing. <laughs> the one that uh, <laughs> Stephen has Check there. Right out. I guess it yeah. works. At a sports show, they sell those, I think, for like 12 bucks. That's right, got it. Yeah. They got one so, you see how, how well this is slicing through this material. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's razor sharp. It has a Scandinavian grind. So, it's, it's great for bushcraft, mm -hmm. whittling, uh, skinning an animal. Steven, you do mm -hmm. a lot of trapping, so you can relate. You like that 90 degree edge on the top of the knife? Too? You know what? Uh, yeah, I do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this. I'm going to take a, a fine grit sandpaper and I'll end up uh, using a 90 degree so we can... Uh, strike a ferro rod? Exactly, exactly. So we can strike a ferro rod. Or metal match, some people call it. And this wood you're using here is this cotton? Uh, no, this is actually from the palm tree. Uh, so when you look at a palm tree, you see the stems and you'll see where the seeds sit, uh, and that's where I harvested it. Uh, the, that uh, it's not the palm frond; it's actually the palm rib. So once we process that down and open it up, you'll see a round rib. And all I've done is I process that round rib down, and this is a soft wood. Uh -huh. And how do you want to uh, uh, gather your woods. There's a little test that I go by. If you can take your thumbnail or a fingernail and you run it across the wood and you can make a minor indentation, it's good to go. Now, it, it, you don't want it to be too soft, too corky to where you run your finger down and it's almost like styrofoam, what's going to happen? That's what you have. Yeah. That's what you have. Yeah. That's called punk wood. So we can use that as a punk wood that's really seasoned. It can be rotted insects and bugs might have gotten to it uh, so this is what we want my spindle is a piece of mule fat this has a corky center throughout this entire spindle and that's another soft wood this right here doesn't score real easily but we have that pithy corky center that's also a soft kind of styrofoamy wood that's going to create the heat we want as much heat as possible because remember with fire there's three basic components, heat, oxygen, and fuel. Without either one of those, we do not have fire. So what I want to do with this is I just want to take my knife and uh, I go about right here and I create a circle, okay? And the reason why I do this, and you see how I'm keeping the safety in mind, I'm taking my hand, my palm, and I'm just scoring around in a, in a round circle. I don't mm -hmm. want to choke up on the blade mm -hmm. to do this. I want to keep safety in mind uh, while I'm doing this process. So what I do here is I do the burn-in process. I sit on, on, on my butt. Some people kneel down. Some people even use the th hand loops. As long as it works for you. I do my bow drills, and, or my hand drills, excuse me, as, actually as well as my bow drills. I sometimes do it barefoot. I can feel the board a little bit more. I can kind of mm -hmm. feel what I'm working around with. Well, is. Is that? <laughs> Bonus is what it is. Oh yeah, I got a, <laughs> got a cap. I didn't even uh, see that. And then I like to do it barefoot. Yeah, barefoot. Barefoot, I like the best. Yeah, that's uh, to say barefoot actually works the best for everybody because you have a little muscle tissue uh -huh. on the side of your foot. Soft tissue. And what it does is it actually will form to the board mm -hmm. and keep it down. But I mean, your boot works well too, shoes, whatever. What he's doing right now is called seating the drill. You're going to seat it and burn a circular indentations the same diameter as whatever your uh, spindle is. Mm -hmm. The reason why you want to do this first, you see some guys start carving a notch. Mm -hmm. Well, 
how do you know exactly where mm -hmm. the center is at mm -hmm. without the actual diameter being there? Mm -hmm. So you burn it first, mm -hmm. then you can look at it and carve your notch. That's a perfect notch right there. Uh, exactly. So yeah. I, I couldn't. I, I could probably guess and be like, oh yeah, it, it end up right here. Well, no, I want to look at it first, then do this. I finally got kind of the knack of carving notches. I'm not the best at it. Doesn't matter. Like when you, if you use the, this California fan palms, which you, everybody sees, you know, laying around the, on the freeways and the ground. Got. Your neighbors probably got one. I suggest using this. If you find one on the road and you're driving home, pick it up, take it home. Or you're picking up their trash and you're giving yourself a board or several boards. Right. <clears throat> Sean, you want to grab my water real quick? Yeah. Thanks. Which one is it? Uh, uh, canteen. Is it like ten gallon thing right there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no See kidding. One time when they do that, they All right, got a like question. Against yeah. Things not to do when you're doing that. The vine of the stick. Yeah. I, they sometimes do that. Would you make money uh, on Sweat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweat. Yeah. You get sweat on that ember, it it's all over. Go. That that ember is going to uh, go out. So what I do is now I'm ready for my notch. Now you see what I'm doing uh, is I'm taking the fireboard I'm placing my knife on it about a quarter inch and I'm rocking the fireboard. I'm not rocking my hand and that's also keeping safety in mind. So what's happening is I'm digging that knife into the wood. I have my hand far enough away. I'm extended out and I can conform to my little notch here. Another option instead of using the knife, you got Leatherman or you got uh, a saw knife with a little exactly. saw. You can saw the sides mm -hmm. and then pop it out. Yeah. If you're using a harder wood. Yeah. We teach the, the fan palm because, like you mentioned, there's blister. It, uh, um, but with this, it's minimal blisters, if any. But yeah. When you use the harder woods, like the cotton woods or whatever, when you once you get the your willow skin level and up, all that, yeah. Then you're gonna want to use a saw or something. What they trying to use a knife, trying to cut. Yeah. You know, it's gonna take forever to do that. Yeah, this is a nice soft wood. This is what I have in my area. So uh, it's in an abundance. And it's what's available to you. And, and that's a huge thing, folks, is, is you, have to, you have to use what is in your area uh, and, and what's available, but you also, so that comes into place about plant and tree knowledge. Having the knowledge about all these plants that grow in this area is huge. Like I said, it offers fire materials, building materials, tools, shelter, food, medicine. And uh, as you can see, I'm using this as a tool. So, mm -hmm. and this is a plant that I can recognize. Once again, we have the California fan palm rib, mule fat, and a juniper tinder bundle. Does it grow natural in the desert, the palm? Oh yeah, yeah, wherever there's water, you'll find the palm trees. Yeah, there's the only uh, palm tree that's, I heard that's native there. On your uh, way home, uh, I guarantee you're gonna find them laying the in the street palm. right down the, leave the park, I guarantee you're gonna see one in the street down there and pick it up. So that's, that's what I do, I drive, my wife gets mad, she's like, he's all embarrassed, what are you doing? I'm like, I just pull oh, over, you should, <laughs> I'm picking up palm branches, man. Take you you home, should see me <laughs> when I go home from the, uh, she's from, like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. My yeah, son so. gets out and helps me too. <laughs> well, when I when I go home from uh, from from the uh, uh, Covington Park area, where we were doing that class, yeah. and Fernando, you you remember, yeah. uh, when when we got home, or when when I left that class, I'll go in and I'll harvest a ton of palm, cottonwood. You should see the drivers when I keep those big fan palm ribs in my Jeep with. I can't even look out. I can't even see out the side window because they're in the way. So, yeah, it, it, if you come across that stuff, you know, pick it up, harvest it. Uh, most likely, it's just gonna it's just gonna sit there and rot. So you may as well put it to use. And this mule fat's found everywhere. I, I work out in L.A. on uh, watching them build a couple schools out there, and there's right down here. There's mule fat, and it's growing in between the buildings. Walk right around there, cut them off, take them home. Yeah, let them dry out, and here's your. Spindle for your hand drill. I was walking, I found this nice piece of wood, and I got all excited. My friend's going, Are you a nuthead? All right, so you see guys see the notch? You know, the big picture. I carved that notch. Now, if you look at his notches, they re resemble a V. Here's mine. Mm -hmm. I do a square. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Either one. Either one will work. And what I do is I flare out these bottom sides. Oh. Why is that? It, it's going to build a real strong ember. Now what I do 
mean, the carbure notch, real quick, um, you want to make it in, if you look at mine, pass it around. It's about a third of the way into the burn in circle there. See it? No more than half, anywhere from a third to a half carved mm -hmm. inside that circle. Yeah. Any more than that, it's not gonna, it's, you're probably gonna end up popping through it. Okay, mm. so now we're ready to go for an ember. What do I have right next to me? I have my tinder bundle right here. So this tinder bundle is gonna sit <clears throat> by my side mm -hmm. and I am gonna keep an eye on this. I do not want this, I do not wanna take my ember to the tinder bundle. I bring the tinder bundle to the ember. Mm -hmm. And can anybody tell me why that is, Stephen? Because the ember might die out. The ember might fly all over the place. What's it happening might crack. right now? It might, Feel that wind? Exactly. We have wind. You get something on top of this and you pick Absolutely. up your ember and you walk over there. Mm -hmm. There it goes. Goodbye. You're losing light. You're losing time. Mm -hmm. There goes your ember. You're done. Your girlfriend's all bitch. Yeah. There you go. I got the hang of making the reverse wrap two ply cordage. Well, you got it? Yep. Get a video, dude. I didn't know it was that easy. I don't know why I didn't get it. All right, I have an ember. All right, how can you tell that? It's smoking on its own. See that? Wait for the breeze, and now we can transfer it. Ah. Too much the wind. Yeah. Okay. Now we can transfer it. Now watch how I'm doing this. <coughs> You're blowing real lightly. Yeah, but it didn't increase it, I noticed. Yeah, you, what you want to do is you baby this thing. You look at it, you can see what it wants, and then you just go from there. You just blow down on it, and it blow the, I've seen people blow them right out, and just, there goes the ember, gone. How he's holding that, that's one option. I don't like doing that in case it starts to burn through. So I'll hold mine on the sides mm -hmm. and do the same thing. I'm just squeeze it or open it, give it more air. Right now, the breeze is blowing this way, so what you, another option is to stand up and go back to the breeze. And get, why is that? The breeze is actually helping you mm -hmm. when you blow on it. It also blows the smoke away from your body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's starting to get. Get a picture of oh, that. Wow. We have fire. See that? I could turn it over so it burns. Yeah, you can do that. I like I like letting it actually uh, burn. But this you is what I was talking about. If you look though, at right? this bundle right now, what's burning? Only the top, right? Yeah. yeah. Now he can walk over to the pit, or preferably he'd be next to his pit. He, we're gonna put it right here. But what could he do? You can insert that into your fire leg. Or, like I mentioned, you could put sticks on top of that. And again, look at all of the top is burning. Mm -hmm. The bottom's not. Mm -hmm. And that'll burn like that for probably, you know, five, ten minutes. Golly. If you were to go out and you blow on it a little bit, ignite it again. But that's the advantage of doing the bundle correctly. Mm -hmm. I mean, see how, how long you have now mm -hmm. to try to put sticks on there and keep it going? 
This is unbelievable. Horses that go this, I mean, you've heard yeah, about no. this happening, but it, to see it in action you is actually just incredible. see somebody you actually make from the far. Right, and this is what, that's why they, we teach it this way, because this is the important thing right here. Uh huh. And again, even if that were to go out, it's still going to smolder in just the exterior burning. The inside's not.